it's Friday afternoon, it's starting to rain, it's promising, forecasting pretty serious amount of rain tomorrow, but it doesn't matter, it's Saturday and it's a weekend off, so um, yeah, a few things have happened off camera, um, I did try taking some footage but it got corrupt somehow, not quite sure how, but it doesn't matter. Um, yes, the uh, ended last, uh, ended part two with the engine out, uh, so what I've done since is I have uh, transferred the engine onto the build stand. So there it is. I have taken the water pipes off. Let's just light it up a little bit. I have taken the water pipes off the back end, photographed them, documented them. Hopefully I will get a load of replacement uh, silicon pipes for them because uh, I don't like the look of uh, the few of them that have come off. One of them, I think I mentioned that it split uh, when I was removing it. So, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, I've taken the top end, top the plate off the uh, cam covers. Uh, that revealed uh, split insulation on the uh, HT leads. Uh, that one was split and a slight little damage to another one. Um, just crushed really so I'll get those replaced when the time is right and it's going back into the car uh, I've had a look at around generally at other bits and bobs the I wasn't going to split the engine in the gearbox as you might recall from my previous video um, I've decided to do so just for peace of mind for checking the condition of the clutch uh, there's a four paddle clutch in there with a uh, helix uh pressure plate competition pressure plate the fingers on the pressure plate look really really good very little wear on them um so i'm really chuffed about that so that means that the fly uh, the uh, pressure plate and clutch can stay on the engine i won't have to disturb those um so that's uh, that's that's really good news um i've been looking around the engine looking at the block and uh, it, it's very dry um, I've given it a go in a couple of places to try and clean it. It comes up really nicely. Um, I'm going to scrub it all with a brush and little um, power tools just to clean it. Um, just just to clean it up, get it nice and shiny again. So I'm hoping to be able to get find a product somewhere online, or you know if somebody's got recommendations that will I can you know spray on or brush on to the aluminium that will brighten it all up i'm not quite sure what we'll do i'm hoping to find something uh, i also found this little situation here whereby the um the stud on the uh, coil pack mount is actually touching against the uh, the water pipe uh, the inlet pipe to the uh, thermostat housing so that's got to get sorted out but uh generally speaking the engine's not it's really good it's nice and dry no leaks no issues compared to the uh the jp4 that uh, i removed from the uh the 106 project now that was really oily it, it was really bad so this by comparison is is actually <laughs> a million times better uh the good thing about this is also that um whomever built it has put a, um, a billet lightened flywheel on there which i wasn't expecting so that's a, a real real bonus they uh, actually they've actually modified um a gti6 sump on there so it's got a high capacity i believe so that will help combat uh, oil surge um, during track days and uh, stuff like that so uh it's been a couple of surprises, a couple of which were, were really nice, you know, with the flywheel and the sump. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be touching the engine really um, until it's time to, to put it back in. The only things I'll be doing soon, once the end of the bonnet, underneath the bonnet stuff is done, I'll be removing the manifolds, the ancillaries, you know, giving the engine a good clean out. I will be changing, replacing the cam belt idlers if needed and tensioners and water pump possibly it was rebuilt in 2017 with uh, and fitted with a high pressure fuel uh, oil pump so that's also very good news i mean look at that the receipt pa uh, package that came with the car um so 
it's all very encouraging so the uh, the knackered pipes are all here in the back exception of the metal pipe which I will get cleaned and uh, powder coated potentially or even sprayed um, who knows we'll see there at the time uh, so the main thing now is you know in uh, in about five or six weeks, at the end of September, the car is going in for a, you know a colour change respray. So all hands you know, on the pump now, really for for getting the uh, engine bay ready. So tomorrow, is, tomorrow's job is uh, basically let's have a look at that for a minute. Is stripping all this out, uh, removing the manifold. Uh, Stripping all the cables, removing the loom, the you know, sensor loom, engine sensor loom, uh, to check that over and clean it, um, retape it, and uh, obviously removing the the servo, fuel filter, throttle cable, the cables, the cables, pretty ugly anyway. So I'm going to get that, get that, uh, get that replaced. Uh, so yeah, it's just a case of uh, documenting, taking photographs of where everything lives at the minute and uh, taking taking that off and uh, putting it back in the right place so uh, that's pretty much tomorrow's task getting all this cabling out of the way so I can make a start on the bits and bobs um, so yes I found a hole however beneath the hole it's absolutely solid so they've repaired it so I need to tidy that all this up and see what's going on and uh, repair that. I've also found a little hole at the front, but that's all it is. Everything else is pretty decent around it, thankfully. So yeah, strip everything out and uh, get it all prepped, primed, edge well, edge primed, and then uh, primed, and basically uh, get it sprayed. Get it sprayed now, though, Grey. I'll do. I'll be doing all that stuff myself. I'll be spraying it all up, and uh, then once it's done and dusted, they'll be going for a respray. So before it goes in for paint, I've got the rest of the trims, body panels, to remove. Um, so I need to make sure that the the hubs are back on the uh, bottom arms, so I can get it rolling again. Um, strip the interior. Sunroof trims, take the sunroof off. Um, like I showed previously there, this this on the sunroof trims beneath where the where they hook on. Uh, on my older car we had the torque screws, the uh, special spacer torque screws. On this, it's basically uh, uh, a rivet with with washers, I think, in there. So I'll have to look into that. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna deal with that one. Um I'm even thinking I might be able to remove the glass, leave the frame in, but don't really want to do that. It's not going to get the best results from the paint shop. But uh, I'll have a look at that and deal with that near the time. So uh, as, as things stand, yeah, I've got quite a lot to do in a relatively short amount of time. So the pressure is on. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it at the minute. For this part of the video so uh, I'll, I'll catch you again shortly
Welcome back. It's now uh, lunchtime on Saturday afternoon. Um, I've been plugging away since about 10 o'clock this morning on this. Uh, pulled the looms away from the front end of the car, bunched them fairly neatly. Um, as you can see, I've decided to, to leave the manifold on. It's not going to create huge issues actually in cleaning and, uh, and priming the, uh, the bulkhead really. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave, leave that on. See how it goes at least for now. And uh, you know, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of cleaning to do. There's mud and crap everywhere. Years and years of it. Um, I've tried removing the uh, the heat shield that the uh, the studs spin through. That's going to be a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to tackle that once I get the uh, the interior stripped out, which will be in another video. But. Uh, um, I'm going to leave the subframe on them for now. I'm going to give it a good old clean um, once it's come back from uh, painters. So the plan is paint, uh, clean, tidy the engine bay, paint it, uh, prime it, and paint it. Sending it, send it away for respray. Uh, the rest of the car that is, and uh, when it comes back, then I can sort out the subframe. I'll drop it, all the struts and everything else. Get it all uh, all tidied up, painted up, and put it all back in, and then start to redress the uh, the engine bay. So next on the list is to remove the servo. Yeah, a little bit of a pain in the ass on these, but not as bad as the uh, the 106. So uh, basically, what I'm going to do is uh, get my torch, which is over here. Somewhere. Where did I put the flimming thing? Um, where the flipping hell did I put that? Ah, here we go. It's in here. Right, so, get this. So, this is it. This is the, uh, these are the fasteners. That hold the servo on and that overhang. Some of these have been you know, a bit untidy. So basically I'm just gonna take take it off. I'm not interested in preserving that. I'll make something else. Uh if I if I do actually make something else to do it, but uh, I'm not overly concerned about soundproofing this because it's not gonna be a you know a nice lumpy pamby old car. It's gonna be a proper proper beater kit so concentrate and take those off and I'll go off camera with these because they'll probably be a little bit of swearing but before I do start I'm going to take the clutch pedal off um, to enable the rest of it to come out. I've disconnected the brake light switch connectors so they're off and out of the way so I'm going to take these clips off and uh, that top left one's going to be an absolute pain in the ass. Well, there we go. Um, so what I'll do, I'll uh, come back to you when that's all done and dusted. So uh, I'm not even going to time lapse this one because it's going to take a while and it won't be particularly interesting. So I'll see you shortly. There you go. Welcome back. Last bolt of the. Uh, Servo system to come out. Just gonna try and get this out of this now. It's just spanners everywhere. Right, okay, we'll give that a try. Right, last bolts come out. Before hopefully it'll all come off on the front of the car. Right. I have to excuse the music, it's loud. I normally like moving things with loud music. Right, let me just go from the outside and pull it out. Mm. 
the loom out of the way a little bit. Make sure I don't uh, wreck anything. Right. Be careful of that switch. Presto, lovely jubbly. Another part of the jigsaw. There we go. That's pretty much it, really. Don't know, this is going to get a good clean. Sandblast, clean up. They don't very last very long. They normally start sweating and leaking a little bit. So, bulkhead gasket is in good condition. There we go with the brake pedal. Clutch return spring, clutch pedal return spring, shall I say? Uh, right, yeah. Just put these uh, skewer nuts back on, and uh, leave that to be done another time. As I've said earlier, the priority now is to uh, get all the uh, cleaning, preparing, priming, edge priming, and painting done. Got one that missing there as well. So. Anyway, never mind. I'll go find this other nut and I'll see you in another part. Just a bit of a tidy up now with the engine bay. Still a couple of small stuff, small bits to remove, but ultimately now it's pretty much where I want to be uh, with it. I've got the lamp skewing brackets. On each side to move, they're going to be a pain, probably break. But there you go, um, so I'll take those off in a bit. Um, yeah, no major evils at all discovered, so I'm quite glad about that. So let me just turn this uh, stereo down a little bit. Spare, good to um, right. Time to do a tool check in a minute. So yeah, no nasty surprises really with uh, any of the bodywork. You know, it's uh, pretty good. I'm happy with that. A lot of cleaning and inspecting to do on the loom, but it's early days for that. What I'm going to do in a minute, I'll, uh, before I start uh, wire brushing, power wire brushing, and all that kind of stuff, what I'll do is I'll cover all this with a blanket. Make sure none of it gets contaminated with the uh, with crap and crud, so it's all really good to go back together. So yeah, I'll uh, have to say I've got loads of cleaning to do with it, but another time. So the plan is I'm not going to go to town and spray the chassis legs. Nardo grey, the Nardo grey will come up to this seam line at the base of the bulkhead. It'll only be Nardo grey from from this seam upwards to the butt over the bulkhead and uh, into the uh, scuttle bay, and it'll be grey from this bracket upwards and inside the legs and up the bulkhead in a wing and the headlamps around. Um, obviously, it's over the top here and the wing tops. So. This, I don't see any point in, in going mad or gray down these bits here, to be honest. So what I'll be doing, I'll be painting them black. A nice, uh, just, you know, just tough black paint. So that's the plan with those. So uh, it takes a, a couple of more bits off and I'll catch up with you again in a minute.
Welcome back to the uh, to later on on the Saturday. It's uh, taking the manifold off, taking the manifold heat shield off, and a few couple of other small bits off. Um, I've made the start. I've degreased the, the engine bay. All fully degreased with uh, using Autosmat G one and one. So now I've seen I've decreased the. Uh, the subframe, although I'm not doing anything at the, at the minute on it, but it's nice and clean. So it'll be half half the job done for when I take it out to give it another clean before I prime and paint it. Just treat prime and paint it. So I've uh, made the start and cleaning the inner wing. There seems to be a whole lot of seam sealer going on in this corner here. It's a bit untidy. I've cleaned it and they've put they've used somebody in the past has used um hammerite to touch it up. It's just a absolute pain in the ass. Because it being oil based, I have to clean it all off before I can prime it. Which is gonna be a problem. But it's thankfully it's only mainly on the inner wings. Um there's been a couple of there's been a bit of touching up around the base here as well. From the bottom of the bulkhead up. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but never mind. Uh, this side of the in the wing, this side, it's got a hole in there. I'll get that sorted out. That's got a hole, even though it's got a repair underneath it, which is absolutely solid. So I'll get that sorted, cleaned, and uh, and uh, tidied up. So basically, uh, the windscreen washer bottle goes in this area. I've had a bit of a think about this side because of course the jack normally rides and resides in there I'm going to take the plastic clips away and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put an alloy catch tank in this section here and run the pipes in um, I'm thinking uh, from from the front in I'm not quite sure yet we'll have a look and we'll see what's available on the market um, yeah that's pretty much where I've gone to today Hey Kelt, hey, here's the foreman, as uh, reliable as ever in the garage with me, not when the uh, the grinding and horrible and horrible stuff's going on, just in case he, uh, he gets hurt, but uh, he's here with the rest of the time. So I'm going to take these clips off, um, tidy it up, I'm going to replace all of these with uh, proper P-clips to hold the brake pipes. So it's going to be uh, it'll be nice and tidy, and uh, no chance of anything um, rubbing through. So that's pretty much it as things stand. So uh, for me and uh, Poochie McPoochie, it's goodbye, and I will see you in the next part of this project.